Good morning, Hoosiers, and welcome back to the Bloomington Breakfast Club. I'm Juliana Mary. And I'm Michael Skiles, but this is not the average episode because this just in, we have a campus-wide power outage. But other than that, it's also Juliana's birthday. So, happy birthday, Jules. Thank you so much, Michael. And even with the power outage, we're gonna make it work today. We're so excited to be here at Studio 7, and we are even having some royal guests coming in for an interview. That's right, grab your cup of coffee, Hoosiers. It's gonna be a great morning. Now, let's talk about some of the pop culture updates that are going on this week. It's time for our unnecessary updates. Okay, so we got a really interesting one uh, this week. A Hollywood production company is currently reanimating James Dean back from the dead in order to let him star in a new Vietnam War, War era film called uh, Finding Jack. So, there's going to be wild. a dead guy in the movie. Which is I, that's why that kind of stuff kind of freaks me out a little bit because they're using a person's who is an actor and their body, but they're not physically present. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I funny. don't know if that's like the way that I would choose to like honor someone's memory is by making it seem as though they're still alive. That just seems super creepy to me. Mm -hmm. And have they been? Have they done this before? I have they never have. seen this. They okay. did in Star Wars uh, Rogue One, I believe. Yeah. They okay. had a, one Leia. of the commanders or something, and I think they did with Carrie Fisher as well. And they're going to do that in, yeah, another Star Wars, I think. So they've done it before, and it actually looks really realistic. Um, his family, I don't know if you know this, but James Dean is from Marion, Indiana, so he's buried there. I mean, I've seen his oh, grave wow. in person, so it'd be crazy to see him alive and, you know, on the big screen again. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see, I think, but his family was cool with it. They said it's the fourth okay. movie that he never got to make. So Okay, awesome. well, I mean... He's continuing on his legacy, yeah, and exactly. I'm sure his fans will be very, very excited. Mm -hmm. But next up in our headlines of the day, the woman who, I don't know if you guys saw, but she broke into the Bronx Zoo lions exhibit. It was like lions and giraffes. And was seen on Instagram dancing around in the cage. Um, she has officially been arrested now. Um, she actually turned herself in while wearing an NYPD I shirt. Saw that. Yeah. Which is very an interesting choice, honestly. Ironic. Kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah. Kind of funny play on her part, but it looks like a fun time to me. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, she just wanted to go out. She wanted to dance a little bit. She wanted to have a good time. Why are we like reprimanding her? I think it's wrong. No, Asher. Oh my goodness, those are wild animals. Like, if if one of them, no, I just don't know how the lion was like super chill. Like in the yeah. video, the lion was just like watching her. The maybe lion it was wasn't fed bothered before him. Maybe, the maybe was it was not hungry. So if the lion was wasn't bothered. I'm not bothered. Okay. I mean, there you go. But I also though feel really bad for the animals that do like act on their natural instincts and then <laughs> and have then really bad. Down. Mm -hmm. cause it or repercussions from those actions because it's completely natural and mm -hmm. just to anyone watching out there do not break into any like cages or anything of wild animals because I just feel like just leave them be you know what I mean <laughs> 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 what do you have for us Asher so in other news um Kim Kardashian West wants to start her own law firm for prison reform this is all after she um, got Alice Marie Johnson released from prison after two decades for nonviolent offense charges. Um, mm -hmm. she, I know that she's been studying very hard. Um, I know that some people are saying that this is kind of controversial. She also met with the president um, last year. She's doing a lot of good work, in my opinion. Do you need a degree for that? Anything? Yes. You got to go to law school. Does she have that? Yeah. She's in the process. She's, she's yeah, in the process. She is. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, and honestly, just furthers my belief that the Kardashians can do anything. I mean, like truly anything that they want. I just think that it's really incredible to see someone who has a personality and a power and a reach so expansive and using their celebrity for a cause that is actually so incredibly like positive and powerful yeah. and getting like people in government to actually do reform. That's, I think that's pretty incredible. That's so important. And I know that so many celebrities, you know, they have 
philanthropic causes that they do support but the fact that she's taking such a forward role in that she can really i mean that's like completely could revolutionize how people see Mm -hmm. this whole cause so i think it's awesome what she's doing and i'm so so excited to see all the people that she ends up helping yeah for sure Awesome. Well, we're going to see what the Bloomington community thinks about these updates with our latest segment of Asher Asks. Hey Hoosiers, TVBC correspondent Asher Michelson here with another segment of Asher Asks. We have some cool segments this week. Let's see what some people think on Kirkwood. So in the news recently, Kim Kardashian said that she wants to start her own law firm for um, prison reform. She recently got a woman out of prison for nonviolent charges. Do you think that she would be a good lawyer? Do you think that's ridiculous that she's calling a lawyer? No, I mean, honestly, like, do exactly what you want to do. I mean, her dad was a really good lawyer, so it's kind of in her blood. Listen, her father was a rockin' lawyer, and I think at this point in her career, she could she could probably do anything, and she could probably do it well. What makes you think that she'd be a great lawyer? She's a woman. So, in the news recently, a woman was arrested for going into the Bronx Zoo into a lion exhibit, and she has now two federal charges of her animal endangerment and all that other kind mm-hmm. of good stuff. Do you think that she should have been arrested? Uh, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, if, if she did it, like, sober, mm-hmm. and she just went in and wanted to talk to a lion, I would say probably. Okay. But, depending on her state of mind, mm-hmm. she may have really been onto something. She was sober. She oh. was. Oh, well then. In yeah, that case, I mean, yeah. it's a lion. What do you? <laughs> the lion didn't seem disturbed though. Well, I mean, she probably got lucky, honestly. <laughs> also, James Dean, the late great actor, is being resurrected for a new film. Um, in a CGI format. A lot of celebrities and a lot of people are not happy with this. Do you think it's weird to bring back celebrities from the dead, possibly? Because people are saying they can do like Marilyn Monroe now and other famous actors like Michael Jackson. It is a little bit strange, but as long as it's really specified and everyone knows that it's CGI and it's just done for a film. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Because they've done this before with, like, with Star Wars. Yeah, they, they do it with Star Wars a lot. Uh, Fast and Furious. With yeah. The, uh, what the heck's his name? Paul Walker. Yeah. 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 Ooh, that, that's touchy. I don't know. I mean, I, I see why they would do it. Like a lot, like you said, a lot of films do it now. I don't think it's necessarily wrong. I, you know, I, I think it looks a little weird when they do it and, you know, but if they want to do it and if, you know, his family's okay with it, then. So Hoosiers, people are actually optimistic about Kim Kardashian becoming a lawyer. Um, as the woman who snuck into the Bronx Zoo, people want her arrested. Bad debt. We don't want Harambe part two. And as for James Dean, people support it and they negate it. In other news, I'm Asher Michelson with TBBC. Back to you guys. Joining us in the studio today, we have Sarah and Zach, the secretary and treasurer of Royal Encounters. Thank you so much for being here with us in Studio 7 today, guys. Yeah, happy Thank to be here. You. Yeah, welcome, guys. Awesome. So could you tell us a little bit about Royal Encounters? So um, Royal Encounters is a totally nonprofit, student-run organization here at IU. And so what we do is we try to visit kids in hospitals and just bring joy to their lives. So we do that dressed as Disney superheroes and uh, Disney princesses and superheroes and whatnot. And we, um, we visit them in the hospital just so we can bring some magic and memories and just kind of brighten, them, brighten their day a little bit. I love that. Such yeah. a unique take on such an important cause. So what is the key to being a good prince or princess? The best way to go about it is to have a smile on your face and whatever character you are portraying, you need to know the facts because the kids know the movies and they'll call you out. (laughs) They'll test you. (laughs) They will test you. And the most important rule is when you give a hug, you do not release first. You have to let the kid release first. It's part of the rules is what we do. We try to follow Disney's guidelines at the theme park, so we try to keep it as the most authentic that we can. Okay. Aw, that's well, adorable. That's nice. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of getting to work with these kids? I think just in general, their enthusiasm. Um, mm-hmm. It's just it's just really interesting. It's really nice to just see how like they kind of play off of you and you play off of them. And it creates like an interesting relationship and it's just a lot of fun basically to just, because they really just, they just light up when they see us come in and they just like to they run up and they start asking us questions and we just are talking to them and interacting with them and so uh, it's just we're sort of playing off of each other and it's just a uh, it's a fun time because we're talking to them and getting some feedback it's it's a good time to just feel their energy and and talk to them Um, do you have like a favorite moment that you've experienced at one of these events oh definitely um the one of the visits that i went on there was a little girl who was so excited to meet 
Tiana. Unfortunately, we did not have Tiana on that visit, so we give cards to them from characters mm -hmm. that can't make it and with a little message. And she broke down in tears, like, "Oh, I'm so happy!" Like she wrote to me, mm -hmm. and I, I, she was just so like overcome with emotion that I was like, "Wow, we really have made impacts on these kids," and it was just really heartwarming to see. That is so special. Just from a card, too. Yeah, yeah just from really a card. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. And so with. Events like IU Dance Marathon coming up next weekend. Why do you think it's so important for IU students to support the kids at Riley? Well, what we're doing is uh, we're help we're fostering a we're helping foster like a sense of community. What we're doing we're helping um, just with some children that may be you know in need and in, in the hospital. We're helping them feel better and um, just have experience some joy, which is also very important. But you know, there's also some things that. Um, joy can't do like they need a legitimate medicine so what you can do is like donating money and stuff like that supporting them financially is, is crucial like we can't um, we can't support them in every single way that is awesome yeah, thank you stuff. guys so much for being here today and for all that you do for the kids at Riley thank you for having thank us. you guys and now we're gonna kick it over to the Bloomington community with Jack on the street for a special soup tasting episode It's a crisp 40 degrees out here in front of Bloomington City Hall building, but the frigid temperatures are not stopping the community from coming out, taking a stroll around the square, shopping for some produce, or trying some hot, delicious soup. For this week's Jack on the Street, I am out on the streets of Showers Plaza for Bloomington's annual soup tasting event. Hey guys, I'm out here at the soup tasting and I'm here with the Ivy Tech team and they have a wonderful smelling soup. Can you guys tell me what, what you're serving today? Yeah, today we're serving a curried butternut squash soup. Oh, okay, yeah. What goes into that soup? Actually, um, we started roasting um, a bunch of butternut squash and we added onions, uh, garlic, ginger. ginger and the spices that we toasted. Yeah, some curry spices as well. I think a masala. Uh, yeah, masala. A masala. I'm here with Alexis and Alicia, who have quite the stack of cups so far. Can you tell me what soup's been your favorite today? I think Dallas's white chicken chili. Dallas's white chicken chili, and for you? And I really liked the red lentil soup. The red lentils. Yeah. Can you describe the, the soup you just had, too? Um, like, what did it taste just, like? Like queso. Queso? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I know yeah, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think I gotta try that. It just tastes like cheese. Well, I'm here with Andrew guys and we're doing a soup tasting. All right, you already took your sip, but cheers. All right, how do you describe it so far? It's good. Not as much as the coconut as I, I thought would come out, but. I don't know, yeah, a... I definitely don't taste the coconut as yeah. much, but. It's a good vegetable. This is definitely a vegan soup, you can tell. There's no trace of meat at all, but. Yeah, it's got like a Thai thing going on. I like it. I like it, I don't think I'd get it though, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, mm. cheers. Happy souping. Definitely. Okay, I'm here with the Sweetgrass team who have one of the most hitting chilies here that everyone's been talking about. Can you guys walk me through what, what's, what's in here without giving away too much? Yeah, uh, so basically we start out with garlic, uh, green bell peppers, um, uh, we have full corn, kernel corn in there, we also have uh, white onions. And so we'll saute all the veggies together and then we'll, we'll put them into uh, a big pot. And so when we add everything together, we add, uh, we add heavy whipping cream. And when we do that, we put it on a low heat on the stove and let it cook for about two, two and a half hours. Uh, and it, cook, makes, it uh, brings every, everything into it. And then our, our, uh, our specialness is a, is a sauce that we make. Uh, that's not on the menu or anything and we just add it to certain items um, and it's it's consisted of uh, different hot peppers and uh, caramelized honey. Oh wow. Yeah. Well with it all just, that. It just mixes up into a batch of deliciousness. I mean really. <laughs> it sure smells you know. that way. Yeah. I found Sandy Drake who is part of the organization that puts this on with the Parks Department. 
And Sandy, can you tell me about all the hard work that goes into this event every year? Yes, absolutely. It's um, the collaboration of a number of people put on through the city of Bloomington. And of course, the chefs that we're featuring here that agree to come out on a cold morning and feed us soup to keep us warm. Um, really, it's a blast. Annual event through the Parks Department. Is there anything new this year, any soups that stand out to you that you've seen so far? Well, I <laughs> I think all of them are certainly amazing. Yeah. What I'm impressed with is that we have options. We have gluten-free, we have vegan, we have, right now I'm having this pork ribalita. It's amazing. Ooh, right? Yeah, it Now really I gotta is. try so, that. So depending on your taste, depending on your culinary taste, there's something for everyone. After less than a single hour, each vendor ran out of soup due to such a record number of participants. The Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department promised this event will continue once again next year, but with one change, double the amount of soup. Reporting from Bloomington's Farmer's Market, for IUS TV and the Bloomington Breakfast Club, I'm Jack Bassett. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. And be sure to follow us at B-Town B-Fast Club on Instagram to see all the behind the scenes looks at how we battled this power outage. Yes, definitely. And don't forget to tune in next week for our very special IU Dance Marathon episode. See you next week, Hoosiers.